when musicians talk about instruments, we think of the pianos, violins, trumpets, and voices that we use to make music. But scientists use instruments as well. Let's visit the Scripps Institution of Oceanography to find out what their instruments are and what they're being used for. So this is the data logger, and its job is to take the signal from the hydrophone and to digitize it and then to ultimately record it onto hard drives, very small, you know, little, little SD cards, and with very precise timing. So this data logger consists of, there's an analog to digital converter, so the signal comes in and it becomes digitized. Um, there's a, a CPU and uh, a computer, and then a very, very precise clock to give us one timestamp every, you know, 200 thousandth of a second. Uh, and then there's an array of, uh, of hard drives, little SD cards that record up to eight terabytes of data uh, throughout the year. Um, and then this is Lay's favorite card right here. Uh, this is the buffer. So every 75 seconds, this fills up with sound data and we have to record another sound file onto the hard drives. And so the sound of this switching and recording gives us a very distinctive noise signature once every 75 seconds. On the two ends of this process, that is, that is the, the observation of the ocean through sound, the learning about the ocean through sound, and then the expression of, of what we learn now through the, a musical practice, on both ends of that, there's instrumentation that's absolutely vital. So on the science end of it, the instrument is the only way that we can actually capture and observe the, the environment. It's this special thing that translates what was sound in a place that's totally inaccessible to people into what we call data that we can analyze and listen to and, and experience. And then what's been really uh, amazing working with you is to realize, well, similarly, instrumentation is the way that you take your understanding and you express it back into, the, into a world where we can hear it again, where it becomes real. And I have long thought that this having an instrument in the ocean and an instrument to bring it to us, help to bring it to us through artistic expression is one of the most fascinating parts of the project. In the science, one of the things we're trying to do is to extract the signal so that we can learn about an individual character basically in the soundscape. So if we want to learn about bowhead whales, uh, we have to be able to identify the sounds that they make and then to be able to extract those from all of the other things that make sound in the environment. So we can just listen just to that animal. And, and one of the uh, things that happens over and over again with you and with the, all the performers and the different uh, instruments is a very similar process but one done with the, this quantum computer, that the performers are listening to the sound and then actually isolating that signal and recreating it in, through their artistic expression in a way that I, I actually don't think we can do through signal processing. Those have been some of those very moving moments, mm -hmm. is what we wouldn't give to be able to extract a signal and process it so perfectly, really, as what's coming out of the, the instruments. Instruments are things that we built, and they are evolving, and they can be part of this adventure when we are approaching sound. A lot of my favorite moments of our working together uh, happen in recording studios. And I, I think it was really interesting to have you, an oceanographer, be part of a musical recording process or a rehearsal for performance. Because when you share your ideas about what we're hearing, that really inspires all of us. That transition from, from that season when you have 
the sun up 24 hours a day to the sun down 24 hours a day, th those are the two big seasons in the Arctic. And that is there's light and there's dark. And so while you have a daily sunrise and sunset, there's an annual sunrise. And then there's an annual sunset. When we're listening to the sounds together with you and with musicians with various instruments, and the performers are expressing those sounds back through their instruments, those are some of the first times where I had the experience of, of really almost standing on the seafloor, you know, almost being present in that, in that place and at that time in, in history. And in a way that, that I hadn't experienced before through analysis of the, of the data, but it sort of made those sounds, brought them back to life in a way that was really emotionally impactful. Well, yeah, it felt important. These instruments, they're not really like, they're more naturally built to be resonators and amplifiers in a mm -hmm. way. Like it's a bell that amplifies sound, whatever you put in. It amplifies it in a certain way. So if we get rid of the idea of like notes on a piano, trying to match notes on a piano, mm -hmm. and we just think about amplifying the source of what we can do like biologically, you mm. can uncover a lot of like kind of sounds that have been like traditionally shied away from or That's hidden. That's it, yep. Mm -hmm. That you can mimic a lot more of like the the natural kingdom and sounds you hear in nature. Mm. It's a lot more natural to play beluga than bolero yeah. on this instrument. That's yeah, it. it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Stephen Drury was playing the piano and watching the way that he was responding to the sound, you could see, oh, the piano itself was very much acting like a sea ice layer and the, the depth of the piano itself was somewhat similar to relatively the depth of the ocean in the place where we're listening in. For decades or maybe hundreds of years, we have been uh, experimenting with new playing techniques and recreating uh, new parameters in music. You know, um, for example, ten time scale. We can experiment how long a musical uh, composition can be, or phrase can be, or how to play an instrument that make a very unusual sound. Uh, a lot of this happens kind of in a musical laboratory. You know, uh, we make it happen. We we for the pure uh, sheer fun of invention. But it's in this larger context when we're working with you, uh, we realize uh, all of these experiments belong to a, a much larger picture. When we actually make these sounds, like, for example, you can drag a Super Bowl uh, on the back of a cello and make that sound, then you realize that's not just an experiment. That is actually a musical expression when you're in dialogue with a bowhead whale or with a beluga. This gave us new meaning. This gives a, a much larger context that seems to uh, uh, give us a sense of relevance to the much larger discussions that we're having. So um, this kind of work made me feel like, yes, we're hel helping all of the artists to find their place again. We end up paying very careful attention to um, all these subtle nuances in the sound and they have context that allow us to then observe the ocean like the pressure in in the sounds from sea ice or the processes that might go on inside an animal to make it possible to make a sound the more we understand those little details the more we can actually observe in the ocean and this is one of the places where it's been really exciting to explore with you and with other musicians um, because it's the the minute details that matter In a way, it's kind of like looking at the night sky, mm. where we can see things that are nearby that are very recent, but we can also see just all of the things in the, in mm. the universe that are very far and yes. happened some time yes. ago. Right. It's been really interesting and neat to explore those concepts of space and time acoustically in the ocean right. yeah. together. It's almost a cascade of distances and, and echoes that carry memories from far away, but they're all part of this present moment. And it's a beautiful thing to think about.